Hi, my name is Kim Phil. I live in Arlington, Gasland, Texas. I have a message for the very last day of 2015. What if Rod comes here to destroy birds and our water? Two questions. Number one, who is Rod? Well, Rod is a fungus that has affected half of the trees in Hawaii of the Ohio forest. And um, my second question is, if money and growing the economy wasn't the vehicle of exchange for sustenance in our society, <clears throat> what would it look like? So, aside from worrying if that fungus only impacts indigenous OHIA trees in Hawaii, isn't it just a matter of time before a different ailment attacks our trees? Oops, it's already happened in other states here in America via the combination of drought and bark beetles. With most humans, if we personally haven't been affected, and it's not in our fracking backyards, we don't care to fix things, generally. We have to admit we messed up and pooped in our only fishbowl of life. We threw off the delicate balance of carbon dioxide on our planet. We cannot give up on controlling the man-made portion of CO2 because that amount is what nature cannot handle. If you look at the esrl.noaa.gov, they say the Earth has a natural CO2 cycle that moves massive amounts of CO2 into and out of the atmosphere. The oceans and land vegetation release and absorb over 200 billion metric tons of carbon into and out of the atmosphere each year. When that cycle is balanced, atmospheric levels of CO2 remain relatively stable. Human activities are now adding about 7 billion metric tons of carbon into the atmosphere every year, which is only about 3 to 4 percent of the amount exchanged naturally. But that 3 to 4 percent is enough to knock the system out of balance, surpassing nature's ability to take our CO2 emissions out of the atmosphere. The oceans and land vegetation are absorbing about half of our emissions. The other half remains airborne for hundred of years, for a hundred years or longer. This is what is causing the rapid buildup of CO2, a buildup that dwarfs natural fluctuations. For the most part, this is me speaking now, unless something directly impacts us, we humans just don't fracking care, do we? And even if we did care, physically, those working a 40-hour plus work week just don't have the energy to be active in important causes. Which is why I thought we elected our representatives to do this for us. But they mostly represent corporations, not humans. That's a fail. That's a revolt needed. With a global economic growth mantra, we failed our species and other important life on this planet. Bernie Sanders could swipe out a good chunk of unnecessary industrial pollution by dismantling disproportionate income, going to the one percenters, Wall Street, insane profiteering, corporate elitists, and greedy bankers. Putting them in balance would mean less natural resources needed in the mining and manufacturing sectors to feed the excess profit-hungry elitists. Bernie could affect less load on the environment, and Bernie could afford us more water for drinking and not wasting if he is elected, if he doesn't get lost in the political party gridlock of lawmaking. Saving humans from their own extinction, extinction means using less natural resources for trinkets and focusing on growing our own food to replace jobs affected in this paradigm shift. That, in turn, would protect our water from so much industrial pollution, which would lead to less use of water treatment chemicals that are carcinogenic, which would decrease health care costs. And Bernie could help jumpstart the ecological and biospheric rejuvenation of land, water, and ocean systems, we'd see a ripple effect. Our Earth is just waiting for our permission for it to commence its healing. Please enjoy the Tropics Cascade video that has gone viral. It involves world's changed rivers. You can find it on my Barnett Shit 
ornetshellhell.wordpress.com website for the January 31st, 2015 blog. With Hillary or Trump as president, we'd have to take a revolution to the streets. And even if Bernie was elected, and even if the Republicans cooperated in saving humanity, we'd need other countries on board to really try this Hail Mary pass. It's a long shot, I know, facing reality. In a sick way, I hope our love for trinkets and fossil fuels that have compromised our endocrine systems serve to one day quickly and painlessly sterilize humans so our future generations do not have to suffer in despair with thirst and starvation, disease, intolerable storms and temperatures. If the human race died off suddenly and no more carbon goes into the atmosphere, one day the biosphere could recover. But why wish for a healthy planet if no life exists on it? Or no human life? We'd mess it up again, frack it up again. Now, I understand religion's purpose. We cannot fight nature. We can only strive to correct human nature's selfish tendencies. Then and only then will the healing pieces fall naturally in place. We are guilty and condemned for selfish ways and love and sin. Facing our mortality and extinction as a species here, do we work to reach eternity by reaching to our Creator God and imitate His Son, Jesus Christ, who was revolutionist of His day, and beg for a planetary miracle? Or do we become active to restore what He's given us in spite of the hopelessness of the mess we've made? It's literally a mortal sin if we don't at least try. So, when I entitled this blog, what if Rod comes here to destroy birds in our water? I really should have titled it, What if God doesn't come here to restore birds in our water? Thank you. Did you get that silver? <laughs>